What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're going to talk about how to streamline your Emacs completions using a new package called Vertico. So before we talk about Vertico itself, first of all, let's talk about uh, completions in Emacs and uh, sort of set some context for why Vertico is interesting. So in Emacs, one of the most important features of the user interface is the way in which the user makes selections from lists of items. For example, whenever you use find file to open a file, or if you want to switch buffers, or maybe if you're using the meta X key binding to uh, execute commands. Uh, each of these are going to show you a list of options to select from, and you typically uh, either type uh, substrings of text to search for to narrow those completions down, or you use the arrow keys or some other way of interaction to select items uh, that are displayed to you. So there are a few different built-in packages like I do, I complete, etc., which provide different ways of displaying these selections whenever you have a command that provides completions. Uh, but in my opinion, most of them aren't very attractive and they can be a little bit hard to get used to, I suppose. So uh, these days, many people use completion frameworks like Helm or Ivy, which provide enhanced interfaces, which are a bit more user friendly. And they also provide special commands that provide a lot of uh, additional behavior. So uh, commands that could be run for selections or maybe like customizing selections in certain ways. They're very featureful, but at the same time, they're sort of heavyweight and not necessarily the most efficient way to uh, to use completions in Emacs. Uh, but what if you don't use all of the extra functionality or if you don't want it really if you want to have you know less code that gets loaded in your emacs configuration this is where a new breed of completion interfaces comes in uh, namely vertico and selectrum and other packages like that uh, and they all provide a more minimal and componentized ecosystem of packages that allow you to build your own completion framework with only the parts that you care about the things that you actually want to use uh, so I've been using this package called Vertico for this purpose recently, and I really like it. So I wanted to give you a little bit of a demonstration of Vertico and tell you how you can set it up for yourself if you want to try it. So Vertico is a relatively new Emacs package, which provides a streamlined interface for mini buffer completions, which doesn't include any of the other cruft that usually comes along with the more heavyweight third party options like Elm and Ivy, which we mentioned before. Uh, one important feature of it is that it plugs in directly to Emacs' own completion engine, unlike Helm and Ivy, which kind of have their own layer added on top. So with Helm and Ivy, typically you're using their own uh, system for doing completions. It may interact with the low-level completion engine, but there's a lot of extra machinery that go on top to provide things like you know previewing selections or lots of other things like that where you... Um, may notice some more slowness or maybe just, you know, extra stuff that happens while you're trying to do your completions. Uh, so this enables all, so the fact that Vertico actually hooks into the native completion framework into Emacs means that all existing completion commands in Emacs will use Vertico's UI when you turn it on with no extra configuration. If you've used Helm or Ivy before, typically there's extra config that you have to do to make that work. But with, with Vertico, you just download it and you turn it on, you, you start Vertico mode and everything just starts working. So if you want to learn more about Vertico itself, definitely check out the uh, repository at GitHub. Uh, this package is created by Daniel Mendler, who's also known as Minad. You've probably seen him around on uh, the Emacs subreddit and other places, uh, probably the Emacs IRC chat. Uh, but uh, he's very prolific these days making these kinds of packages. So let's talk about how to set it up. Uh, so it's very easy, actually. This package is on GNU Elpa, which you can use easily with package.el and use package. So all you have to do is just copy this little bit of uh, configuration snippet here. We're just going to use package on Vertico. We're going to use ensure T to make sure it gets downloaded if it's not there already. And we're just going to run Vertico mode uh, to initiate the completion interface. Uh, so what I'm going to do is jump over to a more vanilla configuration and I'm going to paste this line in just so that we can uh, try it out. So, okay, before I actually try to run Vertico, I realize I should probably show you what the default completions look like before we show what Vertico looks like so you have a, a frame of reference. So in vanilla Emacs configuration, if you were to use Control X, Control F to do find file, uh, I could start to uh, do the completion in my current folder and press tab and press it again, and then we get this pop-up window that shows you all of the possible options inside this folder. Uh, you can either click on an item to complete the selection, or you could keep typing something like D and press tab again, and keep pressing tab until you eventually get to what you finally want to complete. So uh, it gives you this separate little buffer that pops up and nothing really in the mini buffer area to help you with, with your completions. So now that we've done that, I can show you what it looks like whenever you turn on uh, Vertico mode. 
So I will use Control X, Control E at the end of this configuration here to then install Vertico and turn on Vertico mode. And now if I use Control X, Control F, it will show me a more a larger area in the mini buffer because now Vertico is filling in that mini buffer area uh, with a full interface for selecting items that are here. So in this case, I can use the up and down arrow keys. I believe I can also use Control N, Control P, this, this typical uh, line navigation key bindings in Emacs. And I can select anything uh, here. So I could select init.yell, then press enter. Um, I can also use Control X, Control F, and then uh, type something like, let's say, E. And then it starts filtering down the selections based on what I typed in. I type in S, and then we see E shell. I press tab, it completes that, and it continues on. So in my opinion, this is a much more efficient interface for selecting and navigating selections uh, because it's uh, it basically just gives you the the normal navigation keys you're used to and also makes it so that you can type in uh, substrings to select on and that substring selection can be customized further using other packages which we'll talk about later uh, also things like selecting buffers if i use Control x Control b then we automatically get a new um, uh, s completion that we weren't getting before. We usually you just have to type in the buffer name yourself, but now you actually get a list of buffers to complete. So this is a very nice improvement to the interface, and it's also very minimal and very close to what's already there in the box with Emacs. So I see also Meta X. I think there's a bug in um, the version of Emacs I'm running right now that causes this error with Meta, Meta X in Vertico. Uh, if you're using Emacs 28 with the Nativecom branch, definitely make sure you're up to date on that because I think I'm not here and this is why this problem is happening. Uh, it's a bug that has been fixed. But uh, let's see, what else do we want to talk about here? So we, we did look at find file. We looked at switch to buffer. We could also look at describe function. So this is another instance of a... Um, a completion command that will give you a list of completions. So if I type control H F, now we get the list of all functions available. I could type something like uh, E M A for Emacs. Uh, if you type a dash, it actually will start completing other things inside, which is pretty nice. Um, so you can see that you get a much better interface sort of uh, than what you're used to. And it also looks pretty similar to Ivy. If you've ever used Ivy before, this looks very similar to Ivy. So if you're currently an Ivy user and you want something that's a little bit more minimalistic and streamlined, Vertico could be a great option. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So now let's talk about improving this configuration slightly. Uh, so we, now that we've got the base, basic UI set up, we can polish it a little bit and we can add the following improvements to the configuration. So we can add additional key bindings for users that like Vim style movement keys. As you can see, we have a bind section here that is binding control J, control K uh, to next and previous on the, the, the vertical next and vertical previous commands. Now you may not like these key bindings. They may override other key bindings that you're, you're used to using, but I'm just using this as, as an example to show you that it's very easy to uh, rebind the keys or bind new keys for these movement commands in the, the completion list using the Vertico map key map. Uh, you can also set bindings in the mini buffer local map because it also d basically derives from that. So if you wanted to add some extra bindings for line editing of the uh, the mini buffer input, then you can set it here. Uh, I'm setting backward kill words, so it's easier to just delete words backwards. I like the, I like the meta H key binding for that. Um, also, I, another option that was added recently is this Vertico cycle option. If you turn that to T, then what happens is that whenever you use the navigation keys to move up and down in the selections, if you reach the end or the beginning of the selections, it will wrap around back to the beginning. And that's something that I think is pretty common with Ivy. I, I got used to that from Ivy. So I actually asked the creator of Vertico to add this and he added it in probably about an hour. So it's very nice to, to have this functionality. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Um, also, a couple other things. One is uh, saving the history of any selections you've made in a particular completion list. So for find file, uh, the most recent files that you've selected in a particular folder, those will get saved as history for the completion so that the, ne the next time you show a completion for that folder, the files that you selected recently will actually be at the top of the list. So this may be reminiscent of other packages. I think Helm may do this. Uh, with Ivy, you can do this with um, Smex and with um, Prescient.el, but this is something that's already built in. This is some functionality that's in, in Emacs with this save hist package that's built in, and Vertico just uses this built-in functionality already to provide similar behavior. So it's really nice that it can do that. 
And lastly, we're using a, another package called uh, Marginalia, which was also developed by the same creator of uh, the same person who created Vertigo, which provides extra uh, information in completion buffers. So for files, it will give you information about who created the file, when it was last updated. Uh, for buffers, it will tell you what type of buffer the, the item is. Uh, we're going to see what all of these look like in just a second, but uh, I find it to be a very good improvement on the user interface for Vertigo. Uh, if you've ever used Ivy Rich before, this is something that's also very similar to that. So I've copied all this configuration. I'm going to drop down. Um, let's see. Let's go back to my demo file. I'll drop down here, use control Y to paste it in. Um, and let me just select all this area and then I will evaluate it. And I'll take the other bit out too. So um, let's see, eval region, eval, eval region, thank you. Okay, I think something is wrong with that entirely, but uh, let me see, I'll just run each of these individually. I know it's a little bit ridiculous, but I've got other problems right now. Okay, so I'm turning on save hist mode, and I'm also going to install Marginalia and uh, run that. I believe Marginalia is also on uh, GNU Elpa. Okay, so now if I were to use Control X, Control F, you'll see that I get all this extra information here about the files that uh, and you, can't, you can't really see because I'm in the way. Let me turn off my webcam for a second. But uh, over on the right-hand side uh, of the completions, you see even the... Um, the permissions of the file, the creator of the file, and the group of the file, the size of the file, and the, I think this is the last updated date, which is kind of nice to have. Uh, so you can very easily see that when you're navigating through buffers. Uh, also for, oh, sorry, navigating through files. So for navigating buffers, you can use uh, Control X, Control B, and now it will give you information about, I'm not sure what these symbols mean, but I think they have some meaning in Emacs. Uh, probably about the position of the buffer and whether it's edited or not. Uh, also, the, the size and memory, I think, of the buffer and also the mode of the buffer. So that could be useful for that. I think there are other types of um, completions that get metadata there as well. And it's also very possible to add your own metadata if you want to. So uh, it's a very cool package to use for this purpose. Uh, for save hist, uh, let's see. Let me use Control x Control f here. Uh, I think these two are already saved as history right here, the, the init.el and demo.el. If I go to emacs.org here, and it, now that file has is getting opened, I think it's doing something here. It's taking its time to do that for some reason. Okay, so now if I use control X, control F, uh, emacs.org is now pushed to the top of this list because it's something that I selected recently. Um, I think it doesn't happen for selecting buffers because it already has some behavior for that. However, for something like describe function, it can be pretty useful. So let's describe uh, Vertigo next. So it's going to pull up the docs for Vertigo next. I'll just close this out with Q. And the next time that I run uh, Control H, Control F, describe function, Vertigo next will be the top item in the list. So automatically you get this extra nice functionality for remembering the history of things that um, you've selected in previous selections for specific commands. So it, even to the command level, it remembers, remembers these things. All right, I think that's it for those things. So, oh, the one thing I didn't show you yet was uh, Vertigo Cycle. So if I were to uh, try to show all the buffers, if I press up, it will move my cursor into this, um, the, the area to type in. But if I press up again, it will go down to the bottom and I can just keep going up. And if I want to go down, I can go all the way down and then cycle back to the top. So I find that to be useful sometimes if I know that I want to go towards the end of the list very easily because there's some item down there that I want to select. Um, it can be very useful th for that. All right, so are there any downsides to using Vertigo? Well, there are a small number of downsides at the moment. Uh, first of all, you have to do a little bit more work to configure something that provides similar features to Ivy or Helm. But honestly, that's the point. The point is that you are taking all of the pieces that you want and putting them together. So if you like to customize your config completely and pick all of the pieces that you want, then Vertigo is going to be a great starting point for your completion system uh, because it only just provides the UI. It doesn't provide anything extra on top of that. Uh, also, it's still fairly early in development so that there, there can be bugs, but the author is very responsive and fixes issues very quickly. So if you run into any issues, definitely file issues on the Vertigo GitHub repository because you'll probably get a response quickly and there will probably be a fix pushed out in the next day or two. Uh, I, I've already seen that happen in my case and I've seen it for others as well because I watched that repo. Uh, so definitely don't let that be something that discourages you. In fact, since this package has such little functionality compared to other packages, I don't think you're going to run into major issues that last for a long time because there's just not that much surface area for bugs. 
Uh, the last downside is that the performance for completions in Tramp sessions is poor. So if you use Tramp for uh, editing files remotely and you need to be able to navigate into folder structures on remote systems, uh, the performance can be poor compared to other things like IV or Selectrum, and that's because there's no caching being done for all the completions on the remote system. Uh, that's something that will have to be fixed at some other level of Emacs because uh, Vertigo shouldn't really have to do that, but uh, it's something that is still an issue for now. But if you don't really use Tramp that much, then you're not going to have a problem. The performance of Vertigo is great across the board otherwise. So just a couple other useful packages you might want to look to look into and I noticed that my webcam just died so I'll turn it off now uh, some other useful packages you might want to look at are consult uh, consult is a list of commands uh, like council for Ivy which provides additional completions on top of uh, what's already built into Emacs so if you want things for you know better buffer selections or I don't know a lot of stuff like that uh, they're like for searching across folders or um, there's plenty of other places where, where that kind of thing comes in. So definitely take a look at consult if you want to have a lot more commands you can use for completions with Vertigo. Uh, Embark also is a very helpful package which provides uh, actions for the current selection in Vertigo completion list. So if you have find file open and you have a file selected, you could do things like rename the file, copy the file, delete the file just right there in the completion buffer instead of having to go into DRED or something else. Um, uh, Ivy provides this kind of functionality, so does Helm, so you can use Embark to add this to Vertico to provide the same kind of functionality. Uh, Orderless provides searching across completion, so it provides a, a more efficient way for uh, filtering completions based on text that you type in, which can be really helpful. And then there's also Selectrum, which you would not use at the same time as Vertico. It's an alternative to Vertico. It's less minimal than the other options, but it follows, uh, sorry, it's less minimal than Vertico. It has a little bit more functionality baked in, but it still follows similar principles and that it's hooked into the default uh, Emacs functionality. So if you run into issues with Vertico, you could try to use Selectrum instead. But as far as I found, uh, Vertico has been great and I haven't had to use Selectrum for anything. So I'm definitely planning to cover all of these items in future videos. So if you're interested in this area, please uh, subscribe to the channel so you can see the, the next videos that come out uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, before I go, I'd love to thank my sponsors. I don't know why that is a black screen showing up right now. Um, uh, these people have decided to sponsor the work that I'm doing, creating videos about Emacs, GNU Geeks, etc. And I'm very thankful to them for their support. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of the videos that I make here, please uh, look at the links I have below in the description. I'm on both Patreon and GitHub sponsors, and I have a link to PayPal for one-time tips. You can also do one-time tips on GitHub sponsors these days, which is great. Um, also, if you're not interested in, in uh, contributing in that way, definitely at least click like on the video and share it with your friends, anybody who might be interested in watching videos about uh, GNU Emacs. Uh, the more people we have watching videos here and joining the community, the more people we'll have to talk about all this fun stuff with. So I think it'd be great to have more people finding out about it. Uh, so until next time, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Vertigo. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or maybe suggestions for other packages I should check out. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching and happy hacking. See ya.